Hi, it's Friday morning. This is Hurricane Matthew on the current radar as of 9 a.m. Eastern Time, showing the eye continuing to move up parallel to the coast during the course of the night last night, passing just to the east of Cape Canaveral. It has remained offshore, which is some fortune for the Florida coastline in the sense that this core of strongest hurricane force winds has largely remained off the coast. However, that has not reduced the potential for storm surge on the north side of the system, which continues to be the most life-threatening hazard from Hurricane Matthew. Uh, it continues to have a structure with the remnant inner eye wall here, partially dissolved, but still something there inside this larger eye, and it's this expansion of the wind field associated with this larger eye that has allowed some hurricane force gusts to still make it ashore here, and we have wind gusts up to 70 miles per hour currently in the likes of Daytona Beach, Vero Beach, and Melbourne over the last few hours, and we have had hurricane force gusts above 75 or 80 miles per hour in Cape Canaveral and Melbourne during the earlier morning hours. This is going to continue moving up the coast parallel to Florida, but uh, the primary threat is going to remain surge into the Jacksonville area and areas north of Daytona Beach as we go through the morning and afternoon hours and then on up into Georgia and South Carolina where this concave shaped coastline is going to be where the highest water level rises could be possible and this track offshore does not really change the surge inundation potential from the hurricane. Whether or not it's onshore here doesn't really matter in terms of flooding. It simply reduces the potential for catastrophic wind damage. However, the Florida coastline continues to get raked with tropical storm force winds and gusts over 60 to 70 miles per hour over a wide swath of territory. This is the current recon data showing that the pressure has begun to rise, therefore the hurricane has begun to weaken gradually, but it remains a category three with winds of 115 miles per hour, which some of these pink wind barbs show, but again, much of this strongest wind does remain offshore, which is a break for Florida, but again, tropical storm conditions and gusts to hurricane force do continue to impact the Florida coastline. This is the current Hurricane Center forecast track, again showing the track parale paralleling the Florida coastline and then turning uh, parallel to the Georgia and South Carolina coastlines as well. Now at this point during Saturday, it's not clear yet whether the eye could actually move ashore near Savannah or Charleston, South Carolina. Some models do still take this just inland to the left of where the current forecast track is. And so it is possible that wind-related hazards could increase uh, for Georgia and South Carolina over the next 24 to 36 hours. But at the very least at this point, even if the track remains offshore, the primary threat will continue to be the water, as we are still talking about potential storm surge inundation of up to 11 feet in some places in this portion of the southeast U.S. coastline. Everything in yellow here on this map is above 3 feet potential inundation. Everything in orange above 6, red above 9. You can look at this map at hurricanes.gov and zoom into your local area to see the potential inundation where you live. If you live in an evacuation zone in surge-prone areas, please leave as the storm surge is the most dangerous part of a hurricane like Matthew and the water uh, is very, very life-threatening. Again, wind hazards are also possible, but flooding will be the primary uh, threat from Matthew, and we could also have inland flooding and flash floods from rainfall occurring uh, with rivers and tributaries in South Carolina and Georgia and North Carolina as we head through the remainder of the weekend into Sunday. Very heavy rainfall amounts are possible, and keep in mind that as this hurricane moves northward, what usually happens with these is that the primary uh, strength of the system starts switching from the northeastern quadrant, which at this point is offshore, to the northwestern quadrant as it begins to lose some of its purely tropical characteristics in a few days, rainfall begins to increase to the northwest side of the hurricane as it moves up the coast. And so usually some of the heaviest rainfall in, her, in the hurricane will occur in Georgia and South Carolina. So you guys are going to get more rain than Florida from this. And you guys are also more prone to inland flooding in this region of the country. So please be aware of that. Flooding the biggest concern uh, both from the ocean and from rainfall inland from Hurricane Matthew. This is going to be with us for several days yet. This is Friday morning. We're talking about early Saturday morning. It's just now near Savannah. And then during the day Saturday, it's off Charleston. And by early Sunday morning, it's still south of Cape Fear. And then we do see this looping track in the longer range, which, yes, could potentially bring this back down 
into the area of the Bahamas at some point, but the good news is that it is expected to weaken significantly during this time, and this is also still long range and somewhat uncertain, so this is not really an imminent worry at the moment, but it may be something to keep an eye on later in the forecast. But bottom line, we are still dealing with Matthew for a long time to go yet. Again, a large swath of southeast U.S. coastline experiencing life-threatening hazards from Matthew. So please exercise caution, stay safe. That's it for this morning. Thanks for watching.